Hi, so I have this thing. And if I'm brutally honest, when I was given it, I had no idea at all what it was. So I was given this by a friend of mine about three years ago. And he was a nice guy and he gave me this lump of something and I thought, yeah, okay. I put it on a shelf three years later, I cleaned up and thought, really? I should have a look at that. Now, I always get round to stuff. It sometimes takes me longer than other times. So for instance, uh, my wife asked me to put up three blinds. I put up two and it took me 12 years to put up the third one. But I always do stuff, just sometimes it takes longer. Anyway, this thing, I've had it for three years. And I decided to have a look and see what it was. And apparently, it's a HHO torch. And apparently, this is an electrolyzer, generates a HHO flame, and that's the torch for using the flame. And to be honest, I was a little gobsmacked by that. I thought, well, that's interesting. So I dug it out and had a hunt around to find out how it worked, because equally, I've got no idea how it works. So I had a look at that. And apparently, this is the bubbler, and you half fill this with water, although you can use mixtures of water and alcohol, alcohol and acetone. It's supposed to change the nature of the flame and make the flame hotter or colder or whatever it is. Um, this is a little pressure release valve. Now, they do have pressure gauges on here because I think this is just a badged product. It seems that they're coming out of China at a rate of knots and they're things called the H160, H180, and then there's another one, a higher H value, I suppose. This has got uh, Triox Logic on it, so clearly somebody's badged this up and, and uh, was selling it under their own brand. Um, but these are, are starting to come out and starting to be quite popular because I've seen more and more reviews over them over the last sort of few months, beginning 2019, 2020. And I thought, OK, I got to grips with what you need to do with it, but let's have a look at it. So it's got a little um, filler unit here, and then there are four screws holding it on this side, four screws on this side, they're only coach screws, and then four screws in the handles. So I've obviously undone the screws, the handles come off. That little plastic spacer there. That comes off, and that's the inside of it. So let's give a close-up of the inside. Okay, so there's the inside. That's clearly the electrolyzer tank. Here we've got a positive, here we've got a negative. I'm guessing it's a couple of cylinders, one inside the other. Here we've got a little bit of tubing going up to the top there, and that's the water fill level. It'll just tell you how much water is in there by the fill level here. And it says to put about a litre in, actually. That's clearly the pressure valve. So when the pressure builds up, that clearly turns it off. When the pressure drop backs, backs down again, it clearly turns it back on again. There's your fill hole. The um, percentage is 15% by weight, apparently, of potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So it's an alkali um, electrolyzer. Means this will be stainless steel. If you look at that, that's the bubbler. I mean, see the gas out there, actually, right there. So the gas outlet comes into here, pressure release valve down to the bottom, there it is, goes all the way down there, fill that with half, and then it'll bubble back up, and that's your outlet tube going to the hose. And there's the water fill level that was just chittering on about. And we've got a little on-off switch and a little meter there, a little mechanical ammeter. Am I'll put that back on later. If we have a look here. There's the electronics board, and it looks really simple. There's the on-off switch there. There's my power cord coming up here. Little connection point there. That's obviously the outs for the electrolyzer. And it doesn't look much more complicated than the straightforward power board. But, hey, let's unscrew it and have a look. So here's the board out, and it's pretty much what I thought. It's nothing more than a power supply, really. Here is a little IC controller. It's a KA7500B, which apparently is a switch mode power supply controller. So the whole job of this board is to really uh, take in the 23240 volts and bang out whatever voltage at high ampage to the electrolyzer. That's pretty much all it does. We'll put it back now, turn it on, see if I haven't broken anything, and see what kind of voltage it's pumping out. Okay, there it is all back together. I checked the earth continuity to make sure it's all right. I've hooked up a voltmeter. It's on uh, DC voltage, and I've clicked onto the plus and the minus. Fan kicks on, and it's delivering 12 volts. So I don't know about you, but I like to know such stuff, actually. It gives me a ballpark of where I want to be if I want to replicate something like this. So we're looking at a litre container here. 
producing enough gas flow apparently to make a torch. It draws up to about 20 amps maximum. I've been told it should be 15 amps, but 15, 20 amps, 12 volts DC. And um, this is the old electrolyte that came out of it, incidentally. It's fairly cruddy and brown, so a fair bit of iron contamination. So that's going to last, but not forever. It will corrode. And that gives me an idea of where I want to be if I want to make something like this. And I like to know that sort of stuff, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Anyway, let's get it back together and see if we can actually get that torch working. OK, so that's it back together. Screwed it all up, filled that with some water, put a 15% by weight uh, potassium hydroxide solution in there, tightened that down. This thing, tube just pushes on. It's got a little sort of cap that screws on that to hold that rubber on tightly. That seems to do it. And the little handle. All right, ready to go. Uh, it, my friend did give me that. It seems to have two little nozzles on it, so I guess it's two units into one torch. So I suppose you have more power. I've got one unit and one little torch, so God knows. Uh, it's supposed to do things like cut metal. Um, I think polish the edges of bits and pieces, like acrylic, that kind of thing. I'm going to turn it on and see what, uh, what happens, and then we'll do some videos of that. Right, it's shot right up to 12 uh, amps. Buzzing away, give it a chance to get some gas going. I did find it was good for, and that was removing parts from circuit boards. A nice tiny flame doesn't go very far. Okay, well it definitely works. It comes on when the pressure drops. It creates a flame. Pfft, does exactly what other people have said that it does. It, the flame actually is really incredibly difficult to see, and to be honest, really quite poor. I tried to go through a, a bit of aluminium. Uh, this stuff is so thin I can actually break this with my hands. Uh, I gave it a go on a bit of steel. Nothing. Uh, I think it will go through a tin can. Tried it on a bit of polycarb, just turned it into soot. But the only thing I've found it any good for at the moment is bending HDPE. It is incredibly difficult to see the flame. And if you run it down a little bit of HDPE, I'm guessing if you had a ruler on, it creates a heat, soft heat line. and you can put a nice bend in it. And that's about it. That's, that's all I've managed to do with it so far, is put a couple of bends in some polyethylene. I mean, I'm being unfair, I'm sure. Uh, I did watch a guy who changed the mix in here from water to a water alcohol mix. But that is the flame arrester, because there isn't one on here. That bubbler is the actual flame arrester. Bit hesitant to do that, but you know, he, he gave good reports on it. So I guess I'll play around with it a little bit more to see if it's actually something more than a toy. It's um, meant for jewelers, I think. Um, it won't do any serious work at the moment. I'll play with it a bit. I'm really pleased to know what's in there and I'm really pleased to know that it works. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.